So what we have developed uh, is our idea of a school transformation model. We will call it a multi-tier system of supports, or MTSS. In our notion of a multi-tier system of supports, there are, there are seven components to this model uh, that have to be done uh, in concert with one another. Uh, there is no sequential play here, there is simultaneous play. Everything has to be developed at the same time for this to work. That, that theory of action uh, is reinforced by the, the, the great thinking of people like Michael Fullen and Robert Marzano uh, and Rick Dufour and, and his wife and everyone else who is working on schools to good effect. You cannot make change in a piecemeal way. You must make change in a whole system way. So let me share this model with you. As you can see, the model does have these seven components. I want to talk about the first three components that are on the outside of the circle first because they provide the support foundation for what is internal to the model. Of course, leadership is, is, is the essential. Uh, leadership at the classroom level, at the school level, at the district level, at the state level. It is our theory of change, in fact, um, at NCLD with school transformation, that if you focus whole system reforms on the needs of students with learning disabilities and other attention-related disorders, you will improve the outcomes of all students. That can't happen unless there is leadership that is dedicated to results. Not dedicated to a particular bias, but dedicated to results. I'll come back to that. Another part of the support foundation is what we call professional learning. And what we mean by that is the kind of learning that professionals need to do to understand the power of implementing effective evidence-based practice with fidelity. And the third and last part of this foundation of support is called an empowering culture. And part of the empowering culture in the way that we're defining it is empowering families to be involved in the education of their children uh, in ways that are productive for the families as well as for the student, of course. Other parts of the empowering culture include um, having a problem-solving kind of mentality within the, within the school and the district. Uh, the, the last part of it is, is to build a collaborative culture, much as the DeForest have talked about in terms of building a professional learning community. Inside the model, then, are four components. Uh, these four components, again, have to be built simultaneously, and they have to be used in a real synergistic way in order for students to learn the way we want them to. The first is curriculum. And what we mean by curriculum are the materials that are used, the basils, the textbooks, the interventions that are used, making certain that they are evidence-based. Uh, if, if, if a school district cannot get from a purveyor of an intervention or a curriculum independent information, independent information, that that intervention or that textbook or that basil has a good effect on student learning, then the district should never be, be uh, investing uh, valuable resources on that intervention or curriculum. The next is instruction, and of course this is, this is really the key, and this is not a, a, a kind of a money-laden uh, solution to the problem that we have. It just takes dedication to what we know. We have 45 years of research on what makes for effective instruction. We know how to instruct kids if our outcome is to improve the achievement of students. We know how to do this. So that's instruction. And notice now, if you go down to the bottom of the, of the model, you notice the, the issue of assessments. And what we mean by that is everything from the very informal work that teachers do day by day, minute by minute, to help students to be able to, to learn what they are teaching, all the way up and through the comprehensive evaluation that is done to determine if students are eligible for special education. Because I didn't really mention that at the very beginning of this when I was, when I was talking about this multi-tier system of supports. It's our notion that for most students, Students should go through Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 interventions, and then when students still are not being responsive to those interventions, then we know from a screening perspective the set of students who might be eligible for special education. And lastly, the dedication, the core foundational point about this model for school transformation, the, this model for a multi-tier system of supports, is this notion of data-driven decision making. In too many places, school districts and, and, and state departments and classrooms and, and teachers and principals all talk about data guided instruction or data guides what we do. Well, when one says that, that means that occasionally data does not drive what you do. So from our perspective, we must be dedicated to this principle data-driven decision-making. If it works, we keep doing it. If it doesn't work, 
we stop doing it. So let me just close with, with this notion. As I've mentioned, it is my view that we do know how to do this. We know how to do each of these seven components because of decades of research on each of the components. We know how systems change. Systems change when there is whole system reform done or whole system, as we put it, transformation done and not when each piece is dealt with sequentially over time. Our challenge is to do what we know. Thank you.